Mr. Jim Morris, thank you so much for your time, firstly. Um, all, you know, all of us are Pixar fans, and uh, this is the mecca of, uh, for all of us. Uh, could you tell us, um, what's the idea behind this building that's right behind you right now, this campus? Uh, this building actually was designed in the mind of Steve Jobs. Right. And he, um, he liked buildings and architecture. He didn't draw the blueprints for it, but he basically came up with, with the idea. And it's, it has a lot of interesting features to it. In the, in the first case, there's this atrium behind us. And right. the idea was to sort of uh, force people to get together. Right. And, you know, <clears throat> you have to come through the atrium to get anywhere here. Right. The bathrooms are all there. Right. The, the food is there. So by the time you get to your office or to wherever you're working, you've already run into a lot of people. Right. You may have gotten a couple meetings worth of stuff done just because you ran into somebody who could say something right. and, and so forth. And, and so then in the wings of the building, probably the most important feature is each of the corners has what we call a production pod. Right. And so depending on where a movie is in its production, it's, it goes into one of those pods right. and the director, producer, supervising technical director, production designer, all of the key leadership right. on the team live in that pod so that they can interact. Right. Um, and, um, and then the artists that um, are in the, the rest of the wings of the building right. are the artists that are doing the shots on the movies wow. that are in production. So this is actually the building where the production happens. Wow. We have two other buildings, one that we call Brooklyn, okay. and that's actually where all of the development and prep happens, right. and where actually all of the tools are written that we write. Right. And then we have another ancillary building where we have marketing and DVD production right. and things such as that. But this is, the, the, the conceit of this building was to be a production wow. hub. Wow, what is the one thing that you tell all your employees that they should always know and always keep in mind? Well, that's an interesting question I haven't been asked before. Well, one of the things we do ask people to keep in mind is keep it in the family. We don't talk about our projects right. in, in, uh, until they're, they're out there. Um, and the other thing we, we tell our employees and tell them over and over is speak up with your ideas. We yeah. try to get ideas from everyone and, and, mm -hmm. and allow everybody to participate because we get good ideas from it, but it also builds a, a terrific morale. Right. Right. In today's day and age, is it slightly more difficult to keep it a secret with mobile phones and so much communication becoming so much easier? I'm going to knock on wood. We have like a, yeah. a, a, a flawless track record. Wow. And uh, I can't say other studios have that, but I do believe it's, it's because people um, care so much about the projects. Right. And they also care that the audience be surprised and delighted. Right. And, and they don't want a lot out there about the film. They want mm -hmm. audiences to be able to go to the theater and right. see them and, and, and enjoy that. Right. Um, not, you know, not adulterated by <laughs> knowing spoilers. True fans would never do that. Right? Yeah. yeah. You know, whenever we come out of a Pixar movie, Coco, Toy Story, or any other movie, we always tell each other, how do they get it right every time? <laughs> well, <laughs> we get it right every time because we failed so many times in getting it right every time. I know it. We we typically um, we make story reels of these films as right. we're making them, which are hand drawn panels, mm. and we edit them together and make a, a gesture of the whole movie, right. and we watch those and we criticize it, and we. We, we basically make eight versions of a movie before we make the final version. Sometimes okay. it's six, sometimes it's nine, mm -hmm. but we make a lot of versions and, and watch them and see what, is it really working, is it mm -hmm. not, and, and then we try to fix it. So right. we spend a lot of time, we try to be very honest about it and have the fortitude to say it's not good enough or it's not working, we gotta fix it. Wow. And, which creates cost and pain and long yeah, hours I'm and sure. so forth, but I think it's the, it's, it's that commitment to wanting to, we just want to make sure it's worthy of the audience and putting right. some, something out there that they deserve. Right. The magic is in the detail and innovation. Uh, I would have thought after Toy Story that in 2019 when you all come, there'll be a high-tech toy. You all came out with Forky, the most simple <laughs> and adorable toy. What was the thought behind that? Well, it, it, it evolved during the course of it, but it was, it was interesting because we're, we're in thinking about where do you take Toy Story 4 and, and, yeah. and if you think about the film, the theme of the film really is mm -hmm. what, how do you deal, 
what do you do in your life if you feel your purpose is gone? Right. And it brought up a whole bunch of interesting existential ideas, mm -hmm. including like, what is a toy? Yeah. You know, and, and so the idea of, 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 of a kid making a toy that suddenly pops to life and doesn't want to be a toy. It, it, it provided a very good foil to our key character who was going through sort of the converse right. thing, who wanted to be loved and wanted to be a toy, but his, mm -hmm. his sort of time with that kid was done, and right. he had to kind of come to a greater purpose, just as that, that made-up toy had to come to grips with the idea that I am a toy. I have to, I have to be that Entertain, now. Right. Uh, who do you, you know, when a, when a movie is ready, who do you take feedback from? Who are the first people you would show it to just to take feedback? Uh, would well, we, as, we're, as we're about maybe five, six months from, from finishing a right. film, we do an audience preview. We do it with a family audience and we do it with a uh, general audience. And these are chosen randomly or you have a... They are, they're, they're, they are chosen randomly. Okay. They're, they're, they're recruited, but they're from audiences right. at a theater and they get a ticket to wow. go to. They don't know what it is, but wow. uh, they get recruited and they come in. And then they, they, they fill out questionnaires, but then we take a, a portion of them and do mm -hmm. focus groups and listen right. to them. But interestingly... That's the only external input we get on right. a film, and it's just it's just those two screenings. Mm -hmm. And typically, the film's far enough along that all we really change at that point is if there's things that are confusing or right. things the audience didn't understand, or or um, things we see. Because when you sit with an audience mm -hmm. like that, you suddenly see the movie differently. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing the difference it makes. You feel like you've never seen it they before. In a <laughs> and the things that they laugh at or don't laugh at, and you're kind of <laughs> paying attention to that. Um, uh, uh, of course, we show it to our bosses at Disney, Bob Iger right. and Alan Horn and Alan Bergman. But um, beyond that, we really get our feedback from the people internally. Right. Um, not only from the artists working on it, but we will bring groups that are not working on it, whether they're right. in accounting or the kitchen people or whatever, and because right. and they're a great audience and they give great notes. So right. For know. the longest time, studios were pushing big screen experiences. Now, most of your content will be on Disney Plus as well. Um, would you, uh, you know, the magic is in the detail and watching it on the big screen. Uh, what is your reaction when you see kids watching it on their mobile phone? Do they, are you worried that they will I, watch everything the way it's meant to be watched? I am worried about them watching <laughs> the things the way they should be watched. I, I, I see kids watching things on fo their phones and I hope it's just a passing moment in history <laughs> because I, I hope they will come to want to consume things of beauty and detail Whoa. on the bigger screen. The good news is we continue to have pretty robust theatrical experience. Last year, in fact, was at least the biggest box office year of in history. Maybe not the biggest admissions, because obviously tickets mm -hmm. cost more, but that, that business is still robust. And we continue to make things for the, for the big screen. Right. They will all go to Disney Plus eventually. Right. Um, and, but they always went to TV or, right. you know, or, or some form of that. So uh, we continue to want to make things for the, that, that special thing that hopefully is jewel-like and lives on in some wow. way. You're doing such inspiring work and you guys do have the magic touch, so keep entertaining us. Thank you so much. Thanks very much.